During the Human Locust War taking place on Sarah, many humans were met with their own demise and in great numbers. These locusts were thorough, powerful, and more intelligent than you might think. There exists one subspecies of drone, however, that put all of its stats into power, and in the process actually may have taken some of the points out of the intelligence trait. Due to this apparent desire to get swole, this may have actually led to an extinction of this particular subspecies of drone. One man has literally been asking for this video for months now, so here you go, my dude. So with that set up, let's cover the lore and morphology of the Rager from Gears of War. The Rager is an interesting form of locust for a couple of reasons. Most locusts sport some form of intelligence or at least the ability to work out that being shot means pain. The Rager is not known to fall into this category. Because of this, they were not seen for quite some time after their supposed and apparent extinction. During the events early in the war, the Ragers were known to rush into battle with reckless abandon, which, to be expected, put them at great risk. Ragers were successful in decimating Cog soldier numbers, but the same could be said about them as well. So early in the war, they had a sharp rise in success and were quickly stamped out by the more patient soldiers on the lines. This led to their believed extinction, but they would reappear much later in the war, actually about 17 years roughly later. This suggests two things. Either A, they really did go extinct and over time their numbers began to build back up through locust breeding, meaning that this is a genetic mutation that only surfaces under the right events, like any genetic disease humans have, or B, they never really went extinct and were really only just used for shock and awe attack on humanity early in the war, and as the locust hierarchy fell and they went savage, they were once again unleashed on the planet. Either way, ragers are few in numbers, much like that of humanity actually, and would become legitimately extinct later in the war. But if locusts are still up and walking around in Gears of War 4, why have they become extinct? Well, as usual, it all goes back to the emulsion. So let's discuss their biology, neurology, and how the emulsion has affected this creature. First, let's discuss the genetic mutation mentioned previously. As far as we know, emulsion has a major impact on the DNA of species living on or in Sera. Humans contract rust lung as their lungs are broken down and eventually will turn into formers which resemble little of their original human form, barring its shape of course. And emulsion also changes the locust. Considering an entire war was fought with a lambent locust by locust and human alike, the emulsion hijacks your body and changes it. This is exactly what happened to the ragers. Ragers are simply the the product of emulsion interference with the locust body during the early events of the war, but not so much that it turned them completely lambent. Perhaps that means that the emulsion was not successful at interacting with the locust genetic code at the time to change it, thus creating a creature who still had some control but was heavily influenced by the emulsion coursing through its body. Emulsion built up in the locust body again either caused genetic defect leading to ragers or outright changed drones into ragers. It is not known which is which, as I am certain very few biologists could get a good look, but it is believed that they are just a subspecies of drone. I know I've mentioned that, but that's the takeaway from all this. This emulsion would induce several changes in the body structure, however, most notably when it entered a rage metamorphosis. A rager stands at around 6 foot 7 or 2 meters tall, so your average rager would tower over most humans by about 6 to 12 inches. Judging by how tall they are, and the fact that they aren't lengthlets, I would put their weight somewhere in a range of 300 to 400 pounds quite easily, judging by the muscle mass they seem to possess. This is about 136 to 181.4 kilograms. And this is just during their standard form. We will get to their rage form in a minute. Being as large as they are, they were sent in to quickly overwhelm soldiers and their total lack of self-preservation saw them as fantastic soldiers on the battlefield. Well, maybe actually many berserkers really. They possess razor sharp claws in their more docile form and a thick white skin. The skin appears to actually be able to stretch as it seems to sag on the body. While not appearing as large as grenadiers, they seem seem to still be, at least from my perspective, larger than the common drone. So let's first discuss the morphology of the docile form. And with everybody's favorite starting position, starting with the feet, they possess five toes like you or I. However, on each toe exists a razor sharp claw that could be used as a weapon if needed. Moving up the ankles, we see that there are actually restraints. This could suggest that the locusts understand the violent tendencies of this subspecies and have to restrain them, otherwise they will be outright attacked. We do not know if the earlier forms of ragers possess possess the same braces, or if they were more controlled, but the savage locusts appear to see this as a necessity. This is interesting considering that the lambent outbreak later would create creatures like this who would actually attack other locusts. This presumed infection appears to have been seen as a benefit rather than a detriment. It would become much later due to more exposure with the emulsion. Continuing up the legs, we see they are rather proportional to the rest of the body unlike some of the more ridiculous looking roided out locusts you come across. The abdomen and torso are relative in proportion to the 
rest of the body, but on top of this sits very large shoulders. These shoulders have massive arteries running through the arms, suggesting quite a bit of strength is in the area as lots of blood is needed to support the muscle. Again, getting to the wrists, we see more restraints in the areas, clearly signaling that this creature needed to be confined to an area. The hands of the rager are very powerful and possess claws making them quite lethal in combat. Lastly, the heads look like that of a common drone, actually with the mouth appearing maybe a little wider and more ferocious, which in its rage form would mean a larger bite radius. Ragers were absolute units in combat. They would run in with many being gunned down by cog soldiers and begin to wreak havoc while the regular drones and grenadiers would take much better defensive positions. But how was this possible? If they are related to drones, why the increased aggression? Now we come to the neurology of the locust. I'd like to think that I've actually learned quite a bit as I research topics in biology than probably my earlier videos, so I can actually give you more information on the locust. Taking a standard locust brain, there would more than likely be some major differences between a human and a locust brain. Odds are the brainstem and the cerebellum of a drone would be larger than that of a human's due to their size and different bodily functions. The locust cerebrum, specifically the frontal lobe, would be decreased to some degree, yielding creatures who were not as intelligent as man, but due to the vast differences between creatures in the locust army, others would have a larger, more developed cerebrum, sort of like Rom. Though size isn't everything, Neanderthal actually had larger brains than modern humans, yet here we are. Regardless, the areas responsible for rage, bodily functions like breathing and heartbeat, and movement would be areas of the brain receiving more of a workload in the locust brain as opposed to humans. Coming to the rager, again, it would even be more altered. So, we take a trip back to everyone's favorite part of the brain, the amygdala. But before I get ahead of myself, how do I know these things even have an amygdala? Well, considering locusts are related to humans as we learned in the Sires episode, we can assume its brain structure is quite similar to that of Homo sapien. But this amygdala is quite important as it controls the rage ability. Another area increased in the rager is more than likely the adrenal glands as well. Humans under the effects of adrenaline can run, leap, and fight much more effectively. However, its effects wear off quickly after it is dumped into your system and then you become depleted. With that in mind, we move on to the rager's ability. When a rager has become injured enough without being killed, they will enter a state of pure enraged psychosis. It's clear to me that the chemicals and the rager's body are altered in some way due to the emulsion, but also the emulsion itself may be reacting to the bodily chemicals. Let me put it this way. Let's say that there's like a rage hormone. In a drone, let's say that it exists in a standard 10 microliters per liter of bodily fluid. In a human, these levels would be almost negligible, and in a rager, it sits at 30 microliters per liter of bodily fluid. The rager is naturally saturated with this hormone, giving it a much shorter temper. The emulsion in the body begins to respond when the body hits, we'll say around 50 microliters leaders of this chemical. The locust never hits this golden ratio, but the ragers do. Because of this increased hormone, the emulsion reacts violently with the body chemicals and a metamorphosis is induced. The rager undergoes this metamorphosis and its body changes quite heavily due to this. So now we get to the morphology of its enraged form. First, overall the rager's appearance is exceptionally altered. The skin goes from pale white to shades of red, black, and brown. Its muscle begins to double in size. This is actually pretty cool considering its docile forms appears to have the extra skin, much less hot than that of the drone's brothers, so it can actually expand. Anyhow, this extra skin allows the muscle room to grow. The creature will also appear to grow several inches in height as well, and some facial features will change. The creature becomes much larger in general and more resistant to damage, and I guess there's probably a good chance it just notices it less too. The feet of the rager have increased in size and the toes more spread out, but the claws appear to be similar in size to their docile form. The muscle of the calves and quadriceps have increased in size as the restraints are stretched to their breaking point. Continuing up to the pelvic region, we begin to see spikes emerging from the skin. These red spikes would provide extra protection and another point of contact should they run into anything. The abdomen and torso have increased in all forms, weight, strength, and size. This thicker torso allows them to take more damage and keep moving, which in turn protects their internal organs. The upper area of the pectoral muscles and shoulders sport many spikes. It seems to me that this is used as a charge attack in some form. These spikes could more than likely pierce armor and judging by their size, could impale a person, killing them on contact via bleed out. Their arms, to me at least, seem longer as well and have the same red coursing through them. Then we get to the hands. These areas have had the claws grown to ridiculous lengths, making them quite lethal in combat. Able to one hit kill most humans and down cog soldiers with just a few hits due to their size and strength. The head of the rager is also changed with the eyes glowing red and the skin turning red. The canines have increased in size and length, making their bite even more ferocious. The rager has taken the term seeing red quite literally. A case could be made that the ragers are just male berserkers, and considering the noise they make, it does sound like a higher pitched cry 
eye of an enraged female locust. It can also be assumed that the skeleton has been increased in size and thickness, and because of this, it provides more protection to the internal organs. I would also hazard a guess to say that its metabolism will have needed to increase drastically as well as its breathing, heartbeat, pretty much the entire body would be sent into overdrive. Anyhow, let's discuss the spikes for a moment as well, as their physical changes. How is it possible? Well, we know emulsion is quite a mutator. Considering a Brumax stepped in the stuff and turned into this, a drone changed into a ray does not seem that far-fetched. These changes are quite possible seeing as this parasitic life form has worked its way into this particular locus and due to the ability to alter bodies the way it sees fit has created the rager. I would hazard a guess as to say that these spikes are actually made out of bone grown in the area. It should be noted that the rager form is also not permanent. Only able to hold out for a short while it does seem to be the result of bodily chemicals such as adrenaline and cortisol. Eventually the body runs out of this supply and as such dips below the theorized 50 microliters, which just as a disclaimer is simply used as an example, it could probably be a lot less. Upon this happening, the emulsion loses the chemicals needed to enter the excited state and the body returns back to its normal form, should it still be functional and alive. The materials are reabsorbed and distributed, but metabolically this makes zero sense, but the emulsion seems to almost be a god parasite. The rager is now genuinely extinct for the time being. After the deployment of the emulsion countermeasures, this took the lambent, locust, any infected humans, and subsequently ragers, and decimated the lot of them. However, as we all know, the locusts are back in a new form, which could suggest that they too could come back. So there you have it, the lore and morphology of the rager from Gears of War. Maybe due to their comeback of the regular locusts, we will also see them in Gears of War 5. Who knows? Anyhow, I hope you all enjoyed the video. I will drop my Twitter, Discord, and Patreon links in the description if you would like to support this channel. And per usual, I would like to thank my patrons. At the Scientist tier, we have our Lom Lupe, and next up we have RTM Chornage. And last but not least, we have It's Not a Spoon. Our residents are A. Laurentis, Greater Genes 83, Oz Hickman, and Richard Muhlenberg. Next up with our PhD in genetics, we have Allison Kasparo, Andrew Lawson, Divine Whisper, and Laffy No Skill. Casually holding it down with their Masters in Biology, we have Adam Hartswick, Brendan Brotherton, Cameron Smith, Edgy McGee, John Russo, Scott Grant, The Ren of Lies, The Otter Man, and Zervelian. And lastly, with their Bachelors in Morphological Sciences, we have Add to the List, Ahigao Comics, Alex the Gun Guy, Anthony Charles West, Anthony Wolf, Captain Gasmas, Dustin Ellis, Eric Scott Gillies, Molten Tarts, Professor Binnups, Riot, Russell McBride, and Trixie Lula Moon. Thank you guys for your continued support. So, anyone who has made it this far, did you get a notification on this video because they haven't been doing so hot lately? Oh god, my relevancy. Also, I just want you guys to know that I do read your comments. There is just no way for me to answer all of them anymore unless I turn it into a full-time job, and that would kind of interfere with the lab. I appreciate all of them though, like I really do, and I do read them. Well, most of them anyhow. So, thank you guys for watching, and I will see y'all in the next one.